All right, Sixers fans. So the 76ers pulled off their big draft day move. They traded the number 23 pick and Danny Green to the Memphis Grizzlies for DeAnthony Melton. Alrighty, so yep, let's talk about it. So yesterday, I posted something on Twitter. I made a little short comedy vid about it. Click the icon top right and Corey will check it out. About the six fans' expectation with Doc Rivers as your coach going into a draft. Wasn't the exact tell, bit, but you'll be able to check it out. The icon top right hand corner. And I had tw tweeted this. Okay, so I had tweeted that because knowing Doc Rivers, you know, usually with younger players, he doesn't really give him much playing time. You see, Paul Reed, he didn't get much playing time too. Isaiah Joe didn't get a lot of playing time. I mean, Tyrese Maxey being the exception out of those like, younger guys right, under 25 that don't have any experience that got playing time. But for the most part, he has a history of not doing that throughout his career, not incorporating them into his rotation unless they have to be played. So that's why I thought, okay, you know what? Knowing with Doc Rivers being the coach, look, we'd probably be better off trading number 23 initially Matisse, but that turned out to be Danny Green exchange for something, because we're more likely to use them than we would any draft picks. And now, here we are today, that turned into, yep, number 23 and Danny Green for D'Anthony Melton from the Memphis Grizzlies. And we're real, it's a good thing, because we're more likely to use him than we would have any unproven player that would have been drafted, especially with Doc Rivers as our coach. It's good right there. Now, as far as D'Anthony Melton himself, he was initially drafted by Daryl Morey, now, he didn't officially sign. Now, he didn't sign with the Rockets. He signed with the Phoenix Suns for his rookie season. He was there for his rookie year, and he spent the last couple of years with the Memphis Grizzlies. So he was there 2018-2019 with the Suns and the past three seasons with the Grizzlies. And last year, he averaged about 40% from the field, 37% from the three for, from the threes, not the free throw on the threes, and about 4.5 rebounds a game. So not the greatest numbers in the world. And he was averaging about five threes a game, so it shows that he's at least willing to shoot, averaging five three shots a game. So he's at least willing to shoot, at least showed that. And he's a perimeter defender, so at least he helps bring something on both sides of the ball. So bringing something on defense, but being a perimeter defender, helping our defense. And he is someone who's willing to shoot and can get you some points, so... That's a good piece to have come off the bench to help out during the game, to help get some points and to play some defense. So that's good right there. And Danny Green, I had said this before, that the only guys you really need to keep on the current roster really are Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Those are really two guys you can't get rid of. And like I said, it's definitely we're more likely to use him, referring to the Anthony Melton, than we would anyone the Sixers would have drafted. And definitely Danthony Milton. At this point, he is a better bench guy than Danny Green. He's definitely a better bench guy than Paul Millsap. That is for sure. So this is definitely an upgrade right there that does help us out on the bench. But this isn't. it's going to take more than that, though, for the Sixers to be a championship contending team, though. Well, that was a good move last night. Like I said, we're definitely going to use him more in the lineup than we would have anyone would have drafted. So that's a good move by the Sixers right there. Might as well trade that pick to someone who's actually going to use, who's more likely to use the player they draft, and let's get something in exchange for it. And with the Anthony Melton, hey, he's only in his fifth season in the league. So that's what he's going into, his fifth season. That's why I'm holding all five fingers up. So he's going into his fifth season in the league. So he's still young. He's still young, and that's good. We get a nice bench piece that's still young. That's not near the end of his career. That's like Paul Millsap, whose best years are behind him. So that's good right there. And if he turns out, if he pans out for us, he's a bench guy we can keep going forward. And we can have in the future. Maybe even possibly could get incorporated in the starting lineup here and there. Possibly. I mean, he was in the Grizzlies starting lineup a little bit last season. Let's see, I got... So I got an article from SixersWire.USAToday.com. I'll put the link to that in the description box if you want to see it. Make sure, okay, just make sure I got the numbers exact. Because he played about 73 games. Well, he started had 15 starts to 73 games. So I just wanted to make sure I had that number exact. And his stats, okay, they're not the greatest stat line in the world, but at least have something there. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Give me one minute. I can 
share some stats. So I can share some of his stats right there so you guys can get an overview of him. So here we go. Okay, so here we go right here. So ignore the ads right there. Just random ads, ignore them. So, okay. So rookie year, 2018-2019, the Phoenix Suns. Played 50 games, started 31 of them. Okay, he did average two out of makes out of 5.1 attempts. You know, it was 3-point percent, 0.6, and 1.9. 2-point percentage. Well, as you can see there, he was better his second year. First season with the Grizzlies in that 2019-2020 season. Those two-point averages are a bit shaky, though. Especially last year, 1.9 out of 4.4. That's a little bit... Oh, I mean... Yeah, definitely, that's the one thing I'm a little bit concerned about. You can see his free throw percentages. I mean, his second season was his best season shooting in terms of accuracy shooting, as you can see if you look. Right, he made most of his shots, best percentage of shots made was his second season. So that the only thing that concerns me, though, about it is his percentages of makes. But other than that, though... At least we got a young guy that's actually going to go out there, attempt to take shots, actually going to try to help us on defense right there, who can actually get some assists for us, maybe get some steals on defense. So that's at least a good bench. So that's at least a solid bench piece to have right there. Now, obviously, it's going to take more than that for the Sixers to find the right pieces, the tool championship team right there. But Okay, I mean, considering Doc Rivers probably wasn't going to start whoever we drafted, this is a good move right there. It's a good job for the Sixers right there. So I'm going to say right there. So I like what we're getting for the most part, except the percentages of shots made, the shots attempted. That's the only thing that's a little bit concerning. I do feel we should improve on that. But other than that, yeah, I can't, I can't have much negative to say. Mostly positive things to say about this trade right there. You guys let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. Do you like this move? What do you expect from it? How do you feel D'Anthony Milton will fit in with the Sixers? You guys let me know in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, do so. Also, drop a like to help out the algorithm. Most of all, everyone watching, have a wonderful, safe Friday night. If you're going to go out, have some fun, get a little intoxicated, please do yourself a favor. Have a designated driver. Call in cab or an Uber and stay safe. Thank you, Steve, signing off. And I'll see you next time.